and welcome back to Zompocto Theory Video. We're now starting to get into the uh, the fumes of the characters, if you will. Uh, we've gone over pretty much everyone whose Zompocto's release we've seen. In terms of like the main, semi-main cast, I mean, all the captains, lieutenants, most of them anyway. Uh, so now we got to go into the, some of the more obscure ones if we want to continue the series, which I do, because we still got characters we can go over. So we're on to Nanao Ise. Uh, I believe that's how you pronounce your last name. Now you say the former lieutenant of the 8th Division, now the current lieutenant of the 1st Division under co-lieutenant, under Kiraku. And her Zanpakuto, uh, Shinken, oh god, pronunciations really suck sometimes. Shinken Hako, Hakoken. Hakoken. Shinken Hakoken. Uh, and what it does... And what is the theoretical Bonkai of this sword? Now, this is a really unique situation. And we'll talk about one other blade later on in the series that is in a unique situation to this. N uh, because you have to go into a little bit of the backstory of Issei. Uh, 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 Issei, I believe. It's, again, it's not Isane. Because uh, Isane is the captain of, the, of Squad 4 now. Uh, but he, it's easy. Yeah, the Issei clan and all that, because her clan are charged with rites and rituals, and because of that, there it, no individual member has their own zanpakuto, their own specific unique individual zanpakuto that's a representation of their soul. However, there is a sword that is inherited throughout the house, which is passed down from generation to generation. That is the blade that we see here, Shinken Hako, Hakoken. Uh, so, it, this raises a unique question among Zanpakuto. We know that a Zanpakuto is, it, it, it basically it absorbs your own Ryatsu, your spiritual energy, your essence of what you are. And the sword t is a reflection of you. It is you, essentially. So whatever it does, whatever its spirit's personality is like, it's a ref reflection of your personal abilities. But how does that translate to Zanpakuto that are owned by a specific household? There's another example of this in the Can't Fear Your Own World novel, uh, a light novels, uh, the three of them, that we'll go over eventually. Uh... Where, it's again, there's a head household Zanpakuto. There is not a unique Zanpakuto uh, to, to the character. Actually, there is, just under lock and key. Uh, so, the question is, how do these Zanpakuto work? How do they come into being? Is it the collective, like, Ryatsu of a clan put into a single blade, and that is the reflection of the clan as a whole? Is that what it is? Is it someone makes the blade, and then it is given to them that... And then how does that work? Does, um, oh god, what's the name of the guy who makes his own Uh, the, the Zero Squad member, whose name I cannot, uh, remember for the, Omaya? Oh, 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 give me one second, Zero Division. This is actually bugging me, I, because I can remember Ichibe no problem whatsoever. Uh, Kifune, I believe I remember her name. She was the one from the 12th, uh, Division. I want to say it's Omaya, or Omaida, one of the two. Um, I can't remember the one name of the woman who who made the Shihakshu show. I can't remember that. Uh, and I can't remember. Okay, here we go. Uh, Kiro. Uh, one second here. We got Ichibe. Uh, Otetsu. That was I knew it was something to begin with. Oh, Otetsu. Is it like Otetsu made this blade specifically for certain families? We don't know exactly how these blades even come into being. All we know is that they are the family named, or not family named, they are the ancestral Zanpaktos of certain individual clans. It's possible the Kuchkis have one as well. It's possible the Shihoins have one as well. Uh, but we just, we've never seen them. But it then also begs the question that, okay, do these swords even have Bonkais? And if they do, how the hell would you achieve such a thing? Because it's not, the sword is not your own personal blade. It's a family heirloom. It's a blade owned by a, owned by a clan. So do they even, if they have a Bankai, how the hell do they get and obtain a Bankai through that? Is it anyone in the clan could obtain the Bankai? To answer both those questions, at least from my personal viewpoint, 
A, does the Zanpakuto have a Bankai? Yes, and almost 99% uh, confident that it has a Bankai, because that's the way a Zanpakuto works. There is a Shikai, which we seem to now use in the series, so the Shikai must have a Bankai as well. It's just it's just the way a Zanpakuto naturally works. But the, how to achieve that? I assume anyone with enough grit, determination, commitment from that specific clan could achieve the Bankai of the Blade, whatever the Bankai is. But that being said, it's, again, it's a very unique circumstance. Like, we all know every Zanpakuto has a Shikai and a Bankai. It's whether or not someone could achieve it or not is, is something entirely different. But every Zanpakuto does have a Shikai and Bankai to the best of our knowledge. It's just that the clan Zanpaktos seem to fall into a weird area we don't discuss very often. It's like, how do these things actually come to being? How do they work? So, there is that. Uh, now, that being said, we're six minutes into the video. I haven't even discussed what the sword does, nor what I think the Bankai could do. So, the Bankai of the Bla or excuse me, the Shikai of Shinken Hakoya, Hakoya, uh, Hakoken, <laughs> I'm sorry, Hakyoken, Hakyoken. Uh, basically, it has the ability to take the power of a god into itself and disperse it in all directions, specifically eight, because the blade itself isn't really a blade. Uh, as you can see in the image, what it is, is it has a, a standard kind of sword guard, but then the rest of the blade is actually like a wooden sword with eight mirrors on both sides of it. And what it does is when it cuts something of like a divine power, divine, um, you know, makeup, like it did against Lily Barrow in his uh, holy light form, it basically absorbs the power into the blade, the blade we'll call it, and reflects and basically shoots it out in eight directions, basically dividing it and, you know, dispersing the energy all around. It's just that Lily Barrow happened to be a sentient individual at that point, so it couldn't just um, kill him, unfortunately. Uh, like, when confronted by the sword while in his true form, of, his true form of the Quincy of Olstag, and Lily Barrow was unable to, to even see it due to how bright it appeared to be. That blade itself reflects the power of a godly opponent that the wielder is facing. Uh, basically, it takes the power, reflects it, and, if you're lucky, it reflects it back onto the godly-like individual. Uh, Lily lost his left hand to the blow of the sword, despite him having been able to phase through most of Kiraku's attacks prior to the blow. A blow from the sword resulted in energy being dispersed in multiple directions at once. Now, it can also reflect attacks back onto the user by holding the blade in front of her. When she did this against Lily Barrow's, uh, trumpet, I, I don't know if it's quite pronounced that. It looks like it's it's spelled in a way that's T-R-O-M-P-E-T-E. -E. It looks like it's saying trumpet. Uh, a large blast of energy that destroyed most of the area in its path. Uh, it protected... Um, yeah, this uh, Zanpakuto protected a thin strip of land while erasing a vertical section of the least body, causing him to disintegrate into energy shards. However, the energy dispersed by the sword can be harmed. can harm an hour herself if she's not careful. She's not an expert swordsman, so she, she's fact she's a very inexperienced swordsman. She's a keto master. That's where her bread and butter came, but she is not a very good swords per, uh, swordsman, as far as we know. So the question then becomes, it really becomes, assuming this thing has a Bankai, which we can at least assume based on the nature of Zanpakuto, that it does. Whether or not it can be attained at all is another question entirely. What the hell does a Bankai for this look like? What exactly would it do? Well, first off, I do believe it takes form. Like, it change. Some Bankai don't change the form of the blade. They have an effect that goes with it. For instance, um, uh, Tozen's, uh, oh god, Suzumushi, uh, I can never remember the other, the middle part of it, but Enma Karogi. Um, uh, basically, the, the blade itself doesn't change at all, except I think it loses its ring. And then the dome cre uh, creates itself. Uh, Yorin Maru, the blade actually doesn't change at all. Shin, hell, Shinsui's Bankai, it doesn't change at all. Um, but then again, you get others like Soifotes, clearly it changes. Uh, you get uh, Renji's, it clearly changes. Uh, Ikaku's, it clearly changes. So it all depends on the type of uh, blade it is. More keto styles on Pacto seem to not change their form very much. Uh, again, with some exceptions, for example, um, I'm trying to think of one, uh, uh, one right off the top of my head that I can, uh, go to. Uh, actually, a good example of that is, um, Ichimonji. Ichimonji's Bankai evolves on Pacto, but Bankai, uh, it, well, it doesn't change the dress, it does change. Like, that blade does change to some degree. 
I'm trying to think of another one right off the top of my head here. Uh, uh, oh, actually, um, uh, uh, <laughs> of all enough to go into our, um, our Captain Class video later on, uh, Mayori's video, uh, Mayori's uh, Zanpakuto, Agisogi Jizo. It is technically... That falls into a weird category, Zanpakuto. It's te it's not really a keto type, but it's not a melee type. It does have an ability that doesn't really fall into either. But point being, that one drastically changes form. So, I, the question is, clearly this is a keto-esque type, Zanpakuto. Um, not truly using keto, per se, but making use of an ability that can take advantage of that. So, would this change form? I actually think it does. And what I think, at least from an appearance standpoint, it does, is the blade itself loses the mirrors, maybe even gains an edge. Maybe it becomes a bit more uh, capable of fighting. But more importantly, the mirrors envelop the opponent. If you've ever watched Naruto, kind of like Haku's ice mirrors, uh, basically you'd have, probably have like, like a, some, the emirs create like a eight, uh, like a dome or uh, encircle the opponent, get larger. As the, and as they, um, and more than likely what they do is that as they, uh, gaze upon the opponent, they both absorb and reflect the, uh, the energy back on the opponent. Probably at Nanao's will. Like, and Nanao at that point doesn't even need to make contact with the opponent. She basically, the, the opponent is just looking in on themselves. And the mirrors are now just absorbing the energy right back onto the opponent. If the opponent is still physically there, like Lily Barrow might revert back to his physical form she, if she theoretically had to use the Bonkai, if she could. Um, then, basically, she could then fire back the, like, maybe like a swing of the blade or something like that. She could fire the energy back. I think it would be a more... Weirdly enough, it would be a simplistically easier ability to use because she clearly has to make contact with the attack or with the uh, physical body of the godlike being to use the effect of... I, I always like to keep saying it so I can get it ba uh, down a bit more. Shinken Hakuyaken. Hakuyoken. Shinken Hakuyoken. Uh, she clearly has to make physical contact with the, either the attack, the body of the opponent she's fighting uh, to use the effect properly. The Bond guy, I think, just kind of simplifies it a bit more. It's like, no, 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 I don't have to do it now. As long as the, as long as the opponent is reflected in the mirrors, the energy gets absorbed. Now, how much energy the individual has is completely dependent on them. There might be a limit to how much energy this thing can take. And now his physical body can only take probably handle so much Riazzo. Um, it's also po it's also possible that the mirrors don't reflect the attack back. That the reason the blade maybe takes on a more standard sword, like maybe the wood part of it gains more like a bokin like style look. Because if you look at the image here, I'm going to move my face there. If you look at it here, this doesn't look like a bokin. Honestly, this just looks like a, almost like a 2x4 on a sword handle. So, a thin 2x4, mind you, but a 2x4 nonetheless. Um, so, um, uh, but maybe it takes on a bit more like a, a not like a, a straight katana style bokin, but more maybe like a um, a saber or scimitar, maybe. Maybe even similar to, frankly enough, um, Kiraku's uh, Zanpakuto, which do take the form of scimitars. Uh, so, and then maybe she basically can just take all the energy from that she's absorbed, put it into the actual blade itself, and then launch like a straight attack of all the collective energy she's ha taken in. So maybe that is... What, maybe that is what the Bonkai could do. Basically, ma it makes it much easier to absorb the attack, uh, absorb the energy of some, uh, of a godlike being, and then fire the energy back on the opponent. The other thing the Bonkai could do is instead of being a offensive type Zanpakuto to godlike beings, it is more of like the final end all be all, um, like um, answer to a god. If you can't kill the god. You seal the god away. Again, I do still think it's the mirrors, though. The mirrors... I, I still think, the, like, the appearance would probably be something similar to what I said in the first uh, example, where the mirrors get larger and envelop the opponent. But instead of the mirrors um, uh, absorbing it for absorbing it and uh, uh, just the god's energy, it absorbs the god itself. Like, dividing the god between eight points, weakening his hole, or its hole, if you will, and then basically sealing it into the mirrors. Uh, and there you go. And then basically this Zanpakuto becomes a seal. It becomes a 
prison for whatever godlike being it has absorbed, and then reverse to the Shikai. The problem, I, the only problem I see with that is what happens after that. Can the Zanpakuto still be used after that? Or would it maybe be like the final ability of the Zanpakuto added on to the offensive capabilities? If trying to kill the god didn't work, this is the last ability the Zanpakuto can offer. And if that's the case, the Zanpakuto cannot be used because if the Zanpakuto is used, it's releasing the power of the god and therefore risks releasing the god itself. In theory, if that ability, like, for instance, had been used against Elite Barrow at that point, she uses that, whatever the attack may be, uh, like, Eternal Tomb of the Forsaken God. Actually, that would be a really cool name <laughs> for a technique. Um, hell, I, that'd be a cool name for anything, Eternal Tomb of the Forsaken God. Uh, or or the False God. Ooh, the False God would actually be Eternal Tomb of the False God. Oh, I, well, I, I, I mean, that, I'm a guy saying that's a See, think of uh, Asana trying to say that stuff. She gets, Eternal Tomb of the False God. And basically, kind of, I actually think maybe she drops the blade like Byakuya, except maybe she just sticks it in the ground, the mirrors activate, and then basically seals up the god in there. And again, now the Shikai basically can't be used anymore. Like, the sword itself can't be used, because if she tries to release it, she's now risking releasing the god, uh, the individual himself. And Lily Barrel essentially would get absorbed into the blade and could not be released. Uh, so, that is my theory of what this type of Zanpakuto's Bankai could be, hypothetically. This, again, is assuming that it even has a Zomp uh, uh, has a uh, Bankai, which, again, I feel like 98, 99% confident it probably does. The methods to get there, though, are very, con are very odd. Like, in theory, if she were to stab the, I don't remember the name of the item that, uh, or Hara made up to basically force him to bring out a Zanpakuto spirit. And what would the spirit of this even look like? Again, how do clan um, uh, clan Zanpaktos work, basically? Because, again, a Zanpakuto, by definition, is a spiritual, is a Asahuchi that you uh, impart your spiritual, re your reality, your spiritual essence, part of your soul into the blade. And the soul, soul Zanpakuto basically comes to life. A spirit is born from that, born from you. The sword is a reflection of that individual that oh, wields it. Its powers, its appearance, its personality are all just a reflection of you. You and your sword are essentially one and the same. How the hell do these things get made then? <laughs> Who made them? Like, maybe it was like like the, the original head of the clans. Maybe that's what the, who these swords were. Or, or I'm sorry. Maybe that's who made these swords, but the implication being that um, when a Soul Reaver dies, their Zanpakuto should die too. Uh, now, you might say, well, what about Tozen and his friend? It's clear. Tozen took her Zanpakuto. Yes. But that doesn't, and we know that the clan heads can use these other Zanpakuto, sure. But we've never actually seen a Soul Reaper. Think about that for a second. The clan Zanpakuto is clearly an exception, but we've never seen a Soul Reaper use someone else's Zanpakuto. Like, just suddenly take it, use it, and use their abilities. We've never seen that, because that's not their Zanpakuto. What more than likely happened was, Tozen took her Zanpakuto. She probably had yet to actually make a dialogue or really impart much of her essence into the Zanpakuto. Um, so it was still a, probably a blank slate. It's just that, or, uh, and then uh, Tozen was able to impart his soul into it, and basically Suzumushi was born from that, or it was in the early stages of development, uh, like, um, coming to life, and Tozen just overwhelmed what initial Zanpakuto there was there, what his own spiritual Ryatsu, and Suzumushi overcame, uh, overcame, um, I think words here, overcame this, the beginning spirit of that Zanpakuto. And Suzumushi again was born. So that, I think, is what happened with Tozen. It was either that it was still a Nashuhuchi, therefore he could just, you know, do his thing and make his own Zanpakuto. Or it was very early on in the Zanpakuto's um, uh, creation cycle. And Tozen basically came in, interrupted that, and then put his own, you know, power into that. And basically overrid it and, again, created Suzumushi instead. Well, created. And Suzumushi was born instead. So, that, I think, are the, two, the, uh, the reasons for why Tozen's kind of a weird exception. He's less of an exception and more someone who kind of got in there at the right time. Um, 
ultimately, though, yeah, uh, as far as I can tell, you can't just take someone's Zanpakuto and use it. But again, it's very possible, like, the clan Zanpaktos are probably something like the original founders of the clan made. Maybe, like, the first couple... Because there's only... there's Like, el there are elders of the clan. Like, there are the like the esteemed higher-ups of each clan. So it's very possible that maybe it wasn't all the members of the clan who made the Zanpaktos. It was just, like, the highest members of the Zanpakt uh, of the clans who, like, spent some time on a specific Zanpakuto, imparting their essence, their principles, whatnot, into the Zanpakuto, and that Zanpakuto was born. So, that might be the case there. Again, clan Zanpaktos are a very niche, very weird um, sect of Zanpaktos that we rare, we almost never talk about. We actually know, we, I think, it because it, it got brought up, and it gets brought up again, it can't fear your own world. Um, but I don't think anyone actually takes a moment to actually think on what the meaning behind that. So it's just, maybe we'll actually do one. I mean, I've already pretty much gone into my thoughts of that, but maybe that's another video for our time talking about clan Zanpaktos and why they're so weird. So, you know, thinking on that, maybe I'll do that at some point because I just love talking Bleach. And don't worry, when I'm done with the Zanpakuto series and the Strongest Captain Class Shinigami series, I'm not going to be done with Bleach videos. I'm having way too much fun talking about Bleach again to, um, to uh, stop doing that. So don't worry. Oh, I, I will continue doing that. Don't worry. Uh, until then, though, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Like, comment, share, subscribe. As always, if you want us to review something, put in the comments below. I'll let us know. We'll do a review of it at some point. As always, if you want us to review something, put in the comments below. Let me know. I'll get to that at some point. Hit that bell for notifications. I got my Captain Glass Shinigami video to do, and I got the what if. I, I've de generally been designating the Saturdays for what ifs, but because I've been getting home from work and I'm just kind of beat, I haven't really been feeling up to keeping that schedule. But Sunday, I always have off at this point, so... I have no issue really just kind of pushing that up a day at the moment. Uh, it's like, well, 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 maybe you should go back to the original. No, I'm not going to go back to the original schedule because Saturday one actually has been working out. Doing the what if for uh, Saturday has been working out pretty well. For those of you who don't know, I used to do what ifs which, what, about every Wednesday and Sunday. The problem with that came with, uh, after a while, it really started to get taxing when I did both weeks of who would wins and what ifs. Um... And on the extra videos I was always doing on Sunday when I was doing the box office, stuff like that. Uh, I'm not going to be doing the box office. Even though the movie theaters I have opened up finally here. I, obviously, my review for New Mutants is up. And I will be seeing Tenet tomorrow. Uh, I'm probably not going to be doing any box office videos until the until like the, the movie sphere, until the movie going experience picks up a bit for a lot of people. Because right now, there's real, we're in a uh, time... Uh, we're, we're in a period right now where talking about the box office really doesn't, I mean, it's important to see how well movies are still doing given the circumstances, but it's just not fair to be judging any movie of what they're making right now based on what's going on. So yeah, I'm probably, I'm probably not going to be seeing any box office videos for a while, which is a shame because I actually really like doing the box office videos, but right now it just doesn't make a lot of sense. Anyway, thanks for watching though. I hope you enjoyed like, comment, share, and subscribe. As always, you want us to review something, put in the comments below. Let us know the review of it at some point. I already said that. Let's get on. Let's move on to the what if. See you later.